tonight it's gonna be a little crazy but um i've been trying to get all kinds of stuff set up it's been a crazy crazy week um last week was crazy this week is crazy i am literally stir crazy if you can tell i'm at my house which is very odd um and we're going to jump in a little bit tonight we're going to talk about a few things we're going to um have conversations we're going to dive in god's word um before we get started with all that stuff i just want to say i'm Glad to see you. Um, I've texted a lot of you guys and called a lot of you guys and FaceTime a few of you guys, and it's been uh, interesting, but it's been fun. But anyways, before we get started, let's uh, let's open in a word of prayer, and then we're gonna dive into this lesson tonight. So uh, let's let's pray a little bit. Let's pray. Lord gracious, heavenly Father God, we uh, we come before you, Lord, just saying thank you for this uh, day you've given us. God, I thank you for uh, what you're doing in our lives. God, I know it's um, been crazy, um, but we do know this, God. You have given us uh, a spirit of uh, overcoming, not a spirit of fear. And God, I pray that as we dive into your word tonight, God, that you uh, will reign victorious, that you will calm our our fears, you will calm our uh, everything that's going on, God. And I pray that if anyone is struggling tonight, God, if anyone is um, has some worry, anxiety, God, I pray that your word will loosen it. God, I pray that your spirit will move. God, I thank you for the many blessings that we take for granted every day, um, especially gathering together as a body of Christ. But even though we're not here or not together physically, God, we are together um, spiritually. And I pray that our, our spirits will bear witness with one, another, with one another tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've given us. I pray that you'll lead us, guide us, direct us, everything we say and do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. All right. So, um, we're going to dive in. Like I said, I've missed you guys. It's been crazy, crazy. Um, now, you know, like with me, obviously, I am a people person. And to be cooped up in my house, um, I've been to Walmart a couple times, which has been weird. Um, and it's really awkward. And I've only, I only did that because I've not really been afraid of some things. But I have been to Walmart. I have battled. I do have toilet paper, um, which is good. But I didn't fight people and I didn't hoard them. But I, I it's been crazy. Um, been to three different stores, but I got it. Um, but anyway, here's the thing. I know that some of you guys might be fearful, might be afraid of a few things, but God's got a reason for why we're spending some time together. We've a lot of us have had a lot of extra uh, time with our families. We've got to hang out um, and do things with our families, spend time together. This is not how any of us would expect to spend our spring breaks, but God has a reason for all of it. I, I, I want to challenge all of you guys out there, you know, just lean on Christ. Um, in a time like this, lean on Christ. Um, today is is the day that the Lord has made. I hope that you will rejoice and be glad in it every day that you wake up. Whether we stay in here for a month or, you know, a couple weeks or whatever, it is crazy. Um, but God's got this. And I pray that you're not worrying today about it, that you're just allowing God to move in your world. So we're going to dive in um, to his word a little bit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to some of these worries and some of these things that we got going on. Um, and my prayer is that you will allow the Lord to move, um, that you will let him do 
what only he can do and uh, that at the end of the day he gets the glory in all this so let's dive in so we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be in scripture and I'll I'll get to all that and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about all that stuff but we will we'll get into that at some some point so right now we're gonna dive in so I want to ask you a question what is it that worries you think about that what is it that worries you um, maybe you've been worried about you know maybe you've been worried about having a good season this year in, in, in one of your sports or maybe you've worried about you know making a good grade on the next test or maybe it was you know what's prom going to look like and I've tried to figure all that stuff out and you've you've worried yourself to death whatever maybe there's other things that you worry about you know maybe you worry about you know where your next meal is going to come from I do not know um, but worry is out there it's real it's a real thing especially with this virus and all the things that come with it it is people are worried um, people are uh, upset people are freaking out and that's it just is what it is the fact is whatever it is you're worrying about whatever those things you might have worried about this virus came out of nowhere literally and it just stopped everything the whole the whole world the whole world has been put on pause you've been put on pause I've been put on pause everybody's been put on pause now what do you do there's some people that are still going to work. There's some people moving. But, like, literally think of what's happened. Like, the world has just stopped. Like, we can't go out. Like, we go outside and we'll go somewhere. But it's very, like, we don't have any interaction with people. And like I said, for me, this is a struggle. I'm struggling with not being able to hang out with you guys and not being able to um, preach the word and have a conversation with you guys or just seeing you or hugging you or having games that we play. That has been the worst of this. But here's the thing. God's in control, right? See, all the things we thought were so important and all the things we thought we had together, God had a different plan for that. See, when this COVID-19 came in, it halted everything. Almost, I mean, all of us, we just stopped, right? There were a lot of people that were afraid of this virus. There were a lot of people that were scared. And I've seen that. But there were a lot of people that just kind of went about business and that kind of got me to thinking of, you know, with us, business as usual, right? When things come, when threats come, like, where do, where does our hope lie? Where does our faith take us? Are we just going to be complacent and be happy with where we are? Are we happy with just being here um, on this earth? Or, or, like, what is going on? I watch the world. I've, I've looked on Facebook. I've looked on Instagram. I've watched TikToks. I've watched so many different things. I've, I've watched Netflix movies. I've seen so much stuff where fear is kind of taken over. See, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Did you know that when you worry, like 90% of the things you worry about really don't ever come true? typically don't come true, but but we spend our times worrying and, and setting up scenarios, and I'm a scenario guy. I think of scenarios. I think of this scenario. I'm sitting at my kitchen table speaking to you. It's the weirdest, craziest thing. I never would imagine I would do this. Um, I never would have thought that I would vlog, or I guess this is kind of like a vlog, and have a conversation with you guys, but this is the reality. This is where we are right now. So, you know, all these challenges, you got to rise to the occasion, right? 90% of the things that we worry about, though, um, don't usually come true. So what, it, what is the cause for worry? See, what causes us to worry? To have fear. I hope that you understand that fear comes from the devil. See, the devil wants us to be afraid because when we're afraid, we do things that we normally wouldn't do. We, we step out of it. When we're out of our comfort zone, it should, we have two things that, that kind of move us. Are we allowing the spirit to move us or are we allowing our circumstances and things that happen to us to move us. See, for me, I choose to lean on Christ and I choose that to allow his spirit to move in my life. See, I've always been this half uh, glass full guy. Like that's just how I, how I roll. Like I've always been a glass half full guy. So when things go wrong, I'm usually trying to fix it. I'm trying to jump in there. Let me get my hands dirty. Let's make it happen. You know, the devil ain't going to stop me. That is my personality. Now, I would love to say that most people are like that, but I've come to the conclusion that most people aren't like that. My wife tells me all the time, you know, Jordan's like, 
well, there's nobody like you, Chris Carter. Well, that's true. I'm different in the fact that God has called me to be who I am. He's called me to be different. See, I rarely am a doom and gloom guy. Now, I know that there's doom and gloom. I know that people die. I know that people pass away. And I know that bad things happen to good people. But are we really good? See, most of the things, God's grace has allowed us to, to, to get by with a lot of things, to allow us to just move throughout life. He's just allowed us to, to keep moving forward. But we don't actually deserve the things that we've got. We actually don't get what we deserve because God's grace has allowed us to pass those things. See, I'm not a doom and gloom guy, but I know that if there's no hope in Christ, there is some doom and gloom. See, even with the coronavirus out there, um, I've always had faith that God's in control. With all this stuff, I've had faith that God's going to be all right. Like he's going to take care of us. Literally, like the song that we was just listening to, everything's going to be all right. Like, I know that. I've seen that. I've experienced that. Everything is going to be all right. Now, I don't want to act like this virus is of no concern because it is. Like, people are literally out there still getting sick. Um, people are dying. Um, I mean, I just got a text a little while ago from uh, from Carrie. He was talking to us about, he, he, he texted the staff and he was saying some things about people getting sick. Now, there are people getting sick, but you can prevent that. You can choose to use your discernment, what God's called you to do. Stay at home. It's the hardest thing for most of us to do because most of us have lived in a world of busy. Like we go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next event, and we have to schedule to schedule. Like I talk all the time, you know, with my best friend, Justin, I say, in order for us to hang out together, we usually have to schedule it because we're so busy doing other things. There's ball games to go to, there's things to go, there's dance recitals, and there's all litany of things that we all have to do. But this has kind of slowed us all down. I want you to reflect on that. When you wake up, you're not sick today, you're, you're feeling good today, but choose not to go out and do things to infect the people around you. Like, it's our responsibility as followers of Christ to do the right thing. Like, we're called to, to be different than this world. Maybe it's, it's sitting at home. That's crazy to us. And I always say this. One of the best times of the year for us is when we do the winter retreat because we don't, we don't have our phones. We don't do stuff. We spend time together resting. And I want to challenge you these, these couple weeks or however long we're going to be here to take some rest and spend some time with God. I mean, you could go off to your room now, shut the door, and spend some time reading his word. Don't say you don't have time. Homework's not due. It's for, for Elizabeth and City Schools this week, you're off of school. Like, you're, you're on spring break. Even though we're in our house, we're on spring break. You can openly, physically open your word and spend time with him. Maybe you can get together with your family because, you know, we're going to have to come to you via, you know, the internet. So hopefully you can get together with your family and spend some time digging God's word, taking some notes and, and taking some things and applying them to your lives and going out and actually being the church. Instead of going to church, we get to be the church. There's a difference. See, going to church is kind of a thing that people do, I guess, to make them feel better. But when you be the church... There's things that need to be done outside of these walls. There's things that need to be done outside of the church walls. There's things that need to be done outside of your house. Being the church, you can be anywhere. Church, big C. So I want to challenge you to do that. So, what should we do? Here's the thing. I know one thing. All of us at FBC, First Baptist Church, all of us um, have been living, or limiting meeting together. We haven't, like, all of us been in the room at the same time. We move and... We're, we still go to the church. There's still things. I've been trying to do live stream and a lot of different things at the church, but there's still a lot of moving parts. But here's the thing. We've limited the ability to meet and spend time together. We just we can't do that because we're choosing to do that for the betterment. Now, do I think God's in control and I think God can fix everything? Do I think God can wave his hand and, and everybody the coronavirus could be wiped out? Absolutely. I believe that with everything that's in me. Um, but I also know that at this time in this season... I want to choose to do what God's called me to. And I've socially distanced myself, which is, again, really scary. So what do we need in a time like this? Well, hope is what I hope that you have. Um, so we're going to dive into God's word and we're going to dive into Philippians. And typically when we're in Philippians, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 4. 
Um, and in Philippians uh, chapter 4, we typically go to verse 13, is which is where everybody kind of hangs out, right? But we're not going to do that today. We're going we're gonna to be in verses 8 and uh, eight and 9, and we're going to kind of focus in on those verses. We're going to spend some time um, with in the Word speaking about those things. So what does that look like? What do those verses look like, and what 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 is God calling us to do um, in this time? So, this is exactly what God's word's telling us. Let me pull it. I was uh, I had some things open, then I closed them up. But anyways, let's let's read it like this. All right, God's word says this. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything moral, moral, moral excellent, and if there is anything praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Now, the God of peace will be with you. I want you to think about that. I want you to I want you to think about the God of peace. What does it mean to have a God of peace? To to be to have peace with God. God has called us to be different. He's called us to be completely different, to have a peace that passes all understanding. See, what is, what is peace? When I say peace, what does that even mean? Dictionary.com tells us that peace is a state of mutual harmony between people or groups, especially in personal relationships. Now, I want to ask you that. Personal relationships. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Now, when, when the, the life is feeling like there's turmoil, there's things happening and stuff is going all around, like having personally knowing someone is important like that's why the social distancing thing is stressing me out because i love to hang out with people i love spending time like i get together with our with our leaders or i get together with our people at church or i spend time with people like i would much rather spend time with you physically and 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 have conversation with you than i would type you a message on facebook or send you a text i struggle with that because i am a very personable person so what is it like to have a personal relationship like Peace is the state of mutual harmony between people or groups, right? So I hope that you have peace, like this mutual harmony, like a good thing. Like that's that's what the church is called to do. Now we don't always that don't always happen. Like we fight, families fight, right? But having a peace that passes all understanding, like in a personal relationship with people, especially having a personal relationship with Jesus, like I pray that there is peace in that. I pray that when things go wrong and things go crazy that you can see that there is a personal God who who extended his personal hand who went onto a cross to die for your sins. That is personal. But you have to accept that. You hear me say it week in and week out. That is something you have to do. So when worry comes, you're either worrying or you're worshiping. See, God doesn't want his children to worry. When's the last time? I mean, there are people out there who are struggling right now that don't have food, that don't have that don't have things and we need as a family of Christ we need to surround those people. If they reach out to us, we need to go and help. We need to spend time with them. We need to do that. That's what we're called to do. We should have peace in our life. Now, I know this. When I start worrying is because I have a focus problem. See, I, I focus my, my heart and my mind on something different than than what than who Jesus is. I've focused on the problem at hand. See, I know our, my God is bigger than, than any of this. I know that Jesus is, has literally died. He has conquered sin and death. He has resurrected from the grave. He changed my heart and he changed my life. Like, I know that. But then I can lose focus on that and I can focus on the things that are going around me, the problems that are happening the things that are going on, the stuff that I see, those things can start to stress me out, worry me. And what do I do? 
we all have been there from time to time. Like we can start worrying like Corona is going to get us like, like as if it's a boogeyman. Like sometimes I feel like it is this one, this certain situation of this stuff right here has really got to me because sometimes I feel like if you walk outside, you kind of got to watch your back. Like you look left and right and you're like, what's going on? Like, like somebody's going to jump out and get you. Now it is that serious, but that's how I feel. That's how I see the world. Like, I go out into the world like I'm ready to go and I'm ready to take on this this thing because I have Jesus. I've put on the full armor of God when I've walked out the door. My prayer is that you are in this time are not, like you're not struggling, that you've put on the full armor of God, that you've walked out ready to handle um, whatever the world's going to throw at you. So one of the things I've learned is that when we're in scripture and when I'm, when I'm listening, for me, I listen to sermons every day. Like I... I am a, I love the Bible. I listen to scripture. I enjoy listening to podcasts, to things that are encouraging. Um, I don't like discouraging things. That's why I don't like to do, like I'm on Facebook and I, or I'll be on Instagram, but I don't enjoy like watching the hard, bad stuff. Like I enjoy good things. I just, I just do. That's the way my personality is. Now, when I start focusing and worrying and, and getting off, when my mind starts going towards something else, I've lost my focus on the person that, that I need to focus, the, the, the thing that I need. I need to spend time with God. God is like, he, he's always calling. Now, students, you know this. Tell me I'm wrong. Like, it is easier to do anything else than it is to get in Scripture. Why is that? I, you want me to tell you why I believe this? It's because we're in this world, and it says that the devil is roaming around, seeking whom he may devour. He is encouraging us to get in something. He's encouraging us to do anything else but get in Scripture, to get in his Word. Because when we start reading the promises of God, it should start changing our lives. It should start changing our minds. It says we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds, right? Our minds will renew. So when we see something, when we see a scheme of the devil, we should recognize that. And the only way we can recognize that is through Scripture, and his Holy Spirit. See, his Holy Spirit helps us to recognize where we're falling short. So when I start worrying, I know that I'm not focusing on the right thing. So I need to redirect my life back towards moving towards what Christ is telling me to do. He's redirecting me. He's telling me, go in this direction. Do these things. So students, I want to challenge you this this couple of weeks that you've had, you know, away from school, away from, you know, people, um, that maybe you'll get together um, with your small group. Maybe you'll call your small group leader and you'll say, hey, or you'll text with them or you'll try to uh, reach out to them in some way, shape, or form. And maybe that they'll reach out to you because here's the thing. Maybe you can get together in a Zoom. There's a Zoom platform that we've been using. Um, we're learning. I think everybody's learning. Every church in the whole country is learning that you know there's more, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The gospel has never changed. See, the good news has never changed. Jesus is still changing lives. He's still moving in people's hearts. But we have to accept that call that Christ has called us to. We, we have to accept him, take that free gift that he's given us. See, we have to do that. See, there is a responsibility to that. See, we, we get to hear things all the time. I hear people that say, you know, I need to be good or I should be good. Good has nothing to do with it. God has everything to do with it. See, he saved you if you believe. You have to accept that. See, God's done it all, all for you. It's not about what you've done or how, how good you are. It's about knowing Jesus. See, our goal in life is to know him and make him known. Are you doing that? So this week, I want to challenge you as you're, you're out. I mean, who knows? You're probably not going to be out. You're probably just going to be at home. But connect. God has made us has has moved in our hearts to connect. See, that's why this is so hard on most people because if you're on a ball team, I know it's extremely difficult not to be at a ball game right now. You know why ball games are fun? Because you connect with people. You know why going to a store is fun? Because you connect. You know why going to the movies is fun? Because you connect. You know why getting in Scripture Alone with God is fun. Maybe it's not fun to you, but it is to me. When I read his word, it's because we connect. See, our hearts were made to connect, every one of us. We have to feel like we belong. God has a place for you. He's called you to do something greater. He's not called us to worry. He's called us to, to hope in him, in him alone. 
He's called us to be bigger, to, to be more than what we are here. Like it is so much bigger than us. Like this Corona thing, you think God didn't see this coming? I know he did. He saw it coming. And I, I don't know what his purpose is, but I feel like I got a good idea is just to tell us to slow down for a little bit, to focus on him. See, I want to challenge you this week to focus on something outside of your circumstances. I've seen a lot of crazy Christians or just people. I don't know if they're Christians or not. I don't want to, I don't know what, where they stand with the Lord. That's a personal, remember, that's a personal relationship. I don't know where you stand with God. I don't know where people stand with God. But I do know this. I've seen a lot of craziness happen this week. A lot of stuff that's unnecessary. Food being taken. Just a lot of stuff being hoarded up. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and all this craziness. Like, people have taken stuff. Like, just get what you need for your day. Like, to, to make it through the day. Like... Was it saying God's word? Give us, like in, in, in the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Like, just take enough. Allow there to be more for other people. Now, I'm not sitting here acting like I didn't go out and get some extra things. Like, we got enough food. Um, it's pretty ridiculous, but we got enough food um, to feed a small army. Um, that's a blessing. But here's the reality. What if we didn't have food tomorrow? I would hope, see, we get real comfortable doing things on our own and not worrying about everybody else. We try to take care of ourselves and just really handle our own, do our own thing. What happens when we do our own thing? It isolates us. That's what we're experiencing right now. Isolation. The devil works best when he isolates us away from um, people. He isolates us from God's word. He isolates us. Like he's, he might be telling you something this week. You're like, you're not good enough. Well, I got news for you. You're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. See, the perfect lamb of God died so that you could be good enough. See, he gave you a gift that only he can he can only give, and he's asking you to receive it. Something I, I heard this uh this week was is really touched my heart, and I'm I want to start like really harping on this. I really think about that. Do you know that God has no grandchildren? Like he has no grandchildren whatsoever. See, God only has children. So it's not something that your mom and dad did. It's not something your grandparents did. You know, we live in Northeast Tennessee and people say, you know, my dad, my papa was a preacher or whatever. None of that saves you. You're only saved by Christ and Christ alone. So do you know Christ? Can you physically, like you're sitting here worrying, maybe you've worried all week. Maybe you've struggled all week. Maybe you've, you've just, well, are we going back to school? Am I going to get to go to prom? Am I going to get to do this? And seniors right now are like, am I even going to get to walk a stage and graduate? At this point, we don't even know. Like, I would love to say yes, but I have no idea what's going on. Like, will we go back to school? Like, I have to, can you imagine? Like, look at me. Y'all know me. Like, I'm going to have to homeschool my daughter. Like, that scares me more than anything. Like, I'm going to have to make sure she does work. I'm going to have to make sure, Nat, well, Naz will do his work. He's different, but like he, he's different. Like he'll do the stuff, but like I have a 10 year old that I'm gonna have to tell who has ADHD, like her dad, like to do home. You know how difficult that is. I'm pretty sure we're going to have, um, some, some knockout, knockdown drag outs, but you know what? We're going to, we're going to walk through it. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to, uh, you know, when we come to that bridge, you know, what, what do they say? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right? So my prayers this week is that if you're worrying, I know one thing you're not doing. You're not worshiping Jesus. And if you're worshiping, you're probably not worrying. So my question to you is, do you have a peace? Do you have the Prince of Peace? Do you know that you know that you know that you're going to heaven? Do you have a foundation in him? Have you accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior? And do you know that on the day of judgment that you'll be going to spend time with Jesus? If you say no to any of those, won't you have a relationship with him? My, my prayer is that you will make it personal. That you'll have the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You'll allow him to come into your heart, change your life, and that you will spend eternity in heaven with the rest of us believers. 
Now, I'm not talking about the church. There's so many churches doing multiple things. I'm talking about li- that's Little C Church. I'm talking about are you a part of the church, Big C Church? Has Jesus saved you? If he's not, reach out to me. Text me. Call me. Reach out to your small group leaders. Text or call them. But more than anything, even though we're separated, there's you think this is separation? Separation is the worst separation we could ever experience is not knowing Christ. So I want to challenge you. If you're, if you're watching this today, if, if you're seeing this, that you'll say, hey, I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about. I want to have a peace that you're talking about. And that today will be that day. You won't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised. But that you will come today to know Jesus. So I want to tell you I love you with everything that's in me. Let me pray as we as I wrap this up. My prayer is that you will allow Jesus to change your life. Let us pray. Lord God, I pray for the students, God, the impact students. I pray for, um, or maybe anyone else that might be watching this today, God, I pray that you will um, move, that you will do your thing. I've shared the good news, your good news, that you died on a cross, that you came from heaven down to earth and died a sinner's death that you didn't deserve. For sinners like me, like all of us, and you've, and you've given us a free gift to accept you. And I pray that today, if there's one out there that doesn't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they'll come to know you before it's eternally too late. God, I pray that we won't worry, that we will cling to the cross of, of Calvary, that we'll cling to your cross and that we'll say, hey, I want you in my heart, in my life. Start to renew my mind, renew my thought patterns and help me not to worry. God, I pray that you'll just watch over us, that you'll guide us, keep us in your will. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everyone said, amen. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you see this, students, I love every one of you guys. Um, you are amazing. And hopefully we can, you know, we can reach out every day. I can shoot something to you or do something. I plan on doing a TikTok. That might be one thing that I haven't done. I've done a couple TikToks, but I plan on doing another one. It's really crazy, but I plan on doing one. Um, That's going to be weird because when you're cooped up, you start thinking of stuff. And my prayer is that we just have fun and uh, let's just impact the world with the gospel everywhere that we go and all that we do. Love you guys and I hope you have a great day. God bless. Bye, guys.